Hello, everybody. How are you all today? I'm letting all of the attendees join us quickly, and then we will get started. Uh, sorry for our delay this morning. We had a little bit of a technical issue. My name is Lisa Koch. I'm the Associate Director of the University of Kansas Transportation Center, and this is our M3 webinar series. Uh, the M3 webinar series is looking at uh, innovations and modern transportation techniques that we are using in the Midwest area. This is our second to last uh, webinar in the series, and we are so happy to have uh, Kristen Zimmerman and Sheldon Bina from Professional Engineering Consultants here today to talk to us about new technologies for street condition assessments. And before we get started with that, I want to encourage you all, if you know of any innovations or um, interesting concepts that uh, your partners or yourself are doing in the public works arena to submit an application for our Build a Better Mousetrap program. The deadline is May 31st. We'd love to hear from you. I'm going to put a link to the Build a Better Mousetrap program in the, in the chat. And please reach out to us if you have any questions. We'd love to see what you're doing. And it can be ingenuity, um, doing more with less, or technology, um, interesting products, anything you're doing to improve uh, innovation in your public works space. And so with that, I'm going to send it over to Kristen and Sheldon to get started. Thanks for coming today. Well, thanks so much for inviting us, Lisa. We appreciate the opportunity. Uh, looks like we've got a good group of folks on today. Um, like uh, Lisa mentioned, my name is Kristen Zimmerman. Um, I'm a community planner for professional engineering consultants and also the team lead for our uh, planning GIS and land development group. Um, I might let Sheldon introduce himself real briefly. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, again, Sheldon Bina, um, I'm here at PEC in Wichita, um, been involved in GIS in some regard from the early 90s, um, and it's a pleasure to be here on this call. Great. Thanks, Sheldon. Well, today we are going to be talking about new technologies for street condition assessments. Uh, before we jump in, I did want to let folks know, feel free to submit your questions as we go along or comments um, in the chat box, and we'll be sure to respond, and then we'll definitely have time at the end for um, any additional questions, discussion, conversation you'd like to have. Uh, we did want to take just a moment to introduce our company, Professional Engineering Consultants. Like Sheldon mentioned, we are um, an engineering firm, proud to be headquartered in Wichita, Kansas, a, a Kansas-owned uh, owned firm. We are a full services engineering firm, obviously focused on street design, since that's what we're going to be covering today, but we also provide water wastewater, highways, uh, building, structural, um, structural engineering, as well as electrical. So full services firm, we are proud to be partnering with our communities and clients to energize their communities. And then we were hoping we could uh, spend just a little time to kind of better understand our audience today and, and what you're looking for. So we just have a few questions. Uh, we're hoping you'd be willing to answer for us. Uh, the first question is, what type of streets are you most interested in? If you could uh, put your answers in the chat box, we'd appreciate it. Are you interested in sort of rural county streets, uh, making up a county network? Are you interested in suburban streets, uh, urban streets? What sorts of uh, things are you interested in? Okay, rural county highways. County highways, very good. Small municipal roadways, asphalt. Yep, it, it, especially if you're interested in asphalt, concrete, gravel, major and minor collectors, very good. Local street, very good, thank you. That's helpful. Okay, next, does your organization currently carry out an ongoing street condition assessment program? That's sort of a yes or no. Is that something yeah, you do look at uh, maybe on an annual basis, biannual, that sort of thing. Yes, very good. 
Okay, very good. Uh, next one is what type of GIS system does your organization use? Uh, is your organization um, an enterprise system where um, maybe you have one GIS department that's that's covering multiple? Uh, are you sort of a standalone user where maybe you have one person that's your GIS person, your go-to person? Uh, we've also got now uh, Arc, 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 on, Arc GIS Online. Uh, that might be another option your, your um, organization uses. Okay, looks like enterprise systems, very good. Okay, very good. And then uh, la uh, next question is, what sorts of factors are important to your organization in prioritizing street maintenance projects? Um, that might be things like geographic equity, kind of ac across your, your county or, or your city in, in different districts. Um, maybe it's condition, uh, maybe it's cost, like maybe you kind of just have a set budget every year. Okay, very good. Condition thresholds, condition, oh, volumes. Very good. Average daily traffic volumes. Yeah, especially for the water. Not okay, very good. Cost optimization, very good. And then the last question is, uh, what are you most interested in today's webinar? We want to, we of course have a PowerPoint ready, but if there's something we can add in to target something you're specifically interested in, we want to make sure to cover that. This is kind of open-ended question, I guess. Okay, learn about tools available. Very good. Okay, well, thanks so much for joining us. And again, uh, if you have questions, comments, uh, feel free to type in the chat as we um, get going through this. Okay, very good. Well, um, we all know about uh, the KDOT Ike program. Um, that's a big program here in Kansas for paying for highway improvements. Um, KDOT recently has been making quite a bit of money available to local streets, um, both on the city and the county network. And I'm sure many of you on this call have heard Secretary Lorenz um, talk about it. She was just uh, recently out on kind of a state tour in the last month or so. And you may have seen her show this slide about um, the system of systems where we've got, of course, the KDOT state highway system, but then there's city and county systems that we all use to access the state system. Our, our state um, has valued transportation and highways for a long time. We're very proud of that. Uh, we're lucky to be in a state that does. And we know KDOT does a great job of assessing its condition, um, has a lots of information you can see on the slide there. But sort of what's missing is condition on the local system, um, both on counties and cities. And if you can see some of those percentages there in terms of um, center lane miles and percentages of traffic, we can see as a collective, as a whole, uh, city and county networks, the local system provide the lion's share of, of the actual infrastructure that our um, Kansans use every day to, to travel across the state. So lots of importance there. Um, and, and this is just a big area uh, that needs some attention to help us make, make uh, smart use of our limited tax dollars. So today we'll be going over this uh, sort of five things listed here on the slide. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about assessment methodologies. Um, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Sheldon to talk about some of the field data collection tools uh, he's developed as well as some of the GIS based dashboard, which we like to think of as sort of data at a glance. Mm -hmm. um, he'll talk a little bit about a pilot program that we're doing um, using artificial intelligence. And then the last uh, part of our time we wanna spend talking about, you know, now that we have this data, how do we use it? What do we do with it? So assessment methodologies, um, there's uh, several options you can choose from. Um, some folks have sort of come up with their own way of assessing the condition of their, their street system that's specific to the ones they manage. 
Um, we have the pavement condition index. That's a pretty involved method of uh, collecting information. What we've chosen to use here at PEC is called this PASER system, uh, pavement surface evaluation and rating. Um, we chose this methodology for several reasons. One is, um, and probably the biggest reason is it's simple. Um, many of our clients um, are very busy and they, you know, these street conditions or assessment are just one of the many, many responsibilities they're handling. And we know um, that this method is a, a very simple, straightforward method. It's something that can be learned relatively easy and carried out year to year, not overly burdensome. And of course, with simplicity comes uh, simplicity with both time and cost. So that is one method, one reason we chose this method. Uh, the second reason was it covers all of the pavement surface types that um, our clients use on their streets. So you can see on the slide here, um, there's a manual for asphalt roads, gravel roads, and concrete roads. Um, I know it looks like we've got some folks um, from the counties here. I know you have a lot of interaction with our townships. And of course, the gravel roads um, comes into play there. So um, th this has been, um, we found to be very effective, something um, our engineers can go out to do. We can train, um, uh, you know, our engineers can work with the local governments and train them on carrying this out. So it's, it's been the really, um, a really effective um, way for us to, to move forward. So just wanted to, to touch on that. And just to kind of give you a sense of what um, at least some of our asphalt um, ratings would look like for using the PASER system, it does have a one to 10 system, very intuitive, very simple. So um, here's some example pictures of what sort of ratings one to two would look like, at least again on um, local asphalt streets, uh, might be some potholes, or alligator cracking, um, some severe distortions you can see on the left. Ratings three and four. Uh, here's again some examples of what that might look like. Again, these are on uh, obviously residential streets in a suburban setting. Uh, edge cracking, uh, block cracking, you can see there. And some fa uh, fair to poor patching, failure on some of the patches there. And then five and six. Uh, here's some examples again um, of some examples of what that might look like having to do with um, some seal, seal issues. So wanted to just give a sense of what the ratings would be at, at least in a suburban local street setting. So I'm gonna turn it over to Sheldon and he's gonna run over some of the tools um, that PEC has developed um, based on this PASER methodology. Take, take it away, Sheldon. Okay, thank you, Kristen. Um, so, so yeah, we probably like most everyone um, had a, a former workflow of using, you know, either, either paper, which being out in the elements can um, be hard to, to deal with, as well as um, maybe being hard to read once you get back into the office and also, um, once it is written down, what else can you do with that data? I mean, it's just kind of there and you can look at it as a glance and not really do any analysis with it. Um, and we also um, have done evaluations with just using Excel. So it has a little bit more um, capabilities, but then it, it's still just kind of uh, siloed as well as it doesn't really paint a good picture um, visually on what your street network um, looks like. And so, so we um, decided to use um, these apps um, within ArcGIS Online. And um, you'll see that we'll start with a, a map interface and then it will go into um, this form that you see here on the right. Next slide, please. So here's, here's the, the map interface. Um, 
And again, we want it to be easy filled data collection where it's very intuitive. Um, as Kristen mentioned, uh, we both use it internally as well as we set it up uh, for our clients to use. Um, no internet is required, so you can do everything completely offline. And then once you get back into Wi-Fi, it can all be synced up to the cloud. Uh, it also allows you to take and, and save as many photos as you want. Um, again, we want it to be uh, easily um, format of, of doing these evaluations. So with that, if we can start a short video here and I'll kind of talk as it as it's going. So what we'll do is there you see it highlighting um, the segment in the background and it goes to this form, which then carries over those automated inputs to keep it related to that polygon. And then once you select um, the pavement type, which they did asphalt, it then comes up with the criteria for an asphalt street segment. And, <coughs> excuse me. and then as you can see, the ones with the red asterisks are the required fields. And then there's more <clears throat> with the comments that can either be um, typed in or you can also do it um, through voiceover. And there's where you see the, how the pictures are taken. And again, you can take as many um, as desired. And then once, once that segment's completed, it would then turn that segment green so that the evaluator would know everything um, that has been done. So um, once our data is collected, um, we'll then look at it at a glance on the, on the dashboard. And again, um, it's seamless data transfer. So if we were online, this would be populated uh, live basically. So you could see um, as the data comes in, um, the access is set by the client. So we can have different um, dashboards per each audience. Whether, whether that be staff, your council, or even if you want your public to, to view the information. Um, the the one-touch queries is, it has the ability to, if you click on one of the metrics that you see on the border of the dashboard, it will then filter every other metric plus the map um, according to that. Um, we also have a, a, a quantity calculator um, that you can select one or several um, segments, which then gives you um, a, a quantity in square yards on if you're wanting to look at um, the, you know, a certain area that you want to apply a, a treatment to. So we have another video here. Kristen, if you can start that, please. Um, so it will go into um, a segment. It will zoom in here shortly. Oh, uh, my apologies. So it, it's going, we're doing the filtering first. So as you saw, we're looking at a PACER rating of five um, on, on the map there. And then you can see everything that was collected per that segment. And then again, there you can view all the pictures that help validate um, why this particular segment was rated as a five. And then there it's unfiltering. And again, um, everything's dynamic. So it, it's updating all the features about the, um, about the dashboard per which one is selected. Also, uh, I would like to mention up above, you can see, um, where we have historical condition, maintenance tracker. So those, those are other elements that can be added to the dashboard um, where this dashboard is actually giving a, a current, a picture of the current status um, of the street network. So it, it's only showing the most current ratings. So that becomes very helpful um, if you do maintenance to, to a segment and then you go out and reevaluate it, then it, it will then 
um, show in the dashboard that most recent um, evaluation that was performed. So that is the, the data at a glance. Um, I would also like to um, add on what Kristen mentioned earlier about artificial intelligence. Um, we are currently using a, um, in a pilot project where it, it uses a, your cell phone that's attached to your rear view mirror and you drive um, every lane and it's taking pictures every uh, 25 feet or so. Um, and then once you're done driving, you upload it to a cloud service where it goes through algorithms, um, which then will, and those algorithms have the, the PASER rating criteria within it. Um, and so as you can see, that will even become a lot more efficient um, than actually having to have somebody be out on the streets as well as being safer. Um, we we're hoping to receive that data um, here in the next couple of days, and we're um, looking forward to to seeing how that's going to work out for us. On on this last slide here is another dashboard. You can see it kind of shows the same information, but again, it's it's showing it um, differently. Where you can see the actual square yards of each panel. In this case, this was on a a campus setting, so there they. Um, readily have available the panels that that need to be um, re repaired um, as a priority. And with that, I will give it back to you, Kristen. Sounds good. Thank you, Sheldon. So lastly, we just wanted to talk about sort of uh, the data is collected. Now what? What, what do you do with it? Well, um, we wanted to share just a, a few examples of what our clients have used this data for, um, lot, lots of different applications. So uh, some of the information or some of the ways we've heard it being used is to sort of decide which streets to apply for grants. Uh, I'm sure everyone on the call is familiar with the KDOT cost share program, the KDOT C-CLIP program. Um, it helps with sort of internal um, prioritization of what what streets um, would be the best. You know, you can definitely work some of this information into the application, especially the cost share program, which has such broad, um, where you have to sort of justify and make the case for why uh, your project um, deserves funding. So we've heard that this information has been used quite a bit to to help to again sort of make the case for why different roads need need to have attention. <laughs> Uh, that third bullet there talks a little bit about, uh, refers back to what Sheldon had mentioned earlier about, it makes it very easy to um, collect the information that you'll need to generate some of your construction documents. And I'll turn it over to Sheldon to speak a little bit more about that. Uh, yes, so, so once we have the, the information, um, we, we will then take it and we'll go out into the field and we're actually going to um, GPS the locations of patching and other types of repairs, where then that is automatically up updated into the GIS, which then, you know, it can give you the quantities um, and, and such, as well as we will then use the GIS to create basically our plan sheets for the construction documents. And again, it's already in the GIS, so it provides the opportunity to, to be able to track um, the repairs that were done. Yes, very good. Um, these last couple examples, um, it's been helpful to review maintenance history. So when clients have 
um, chosen to upload some of their the previous maintenance history into this, um, like on the dashboard Sheldon mentioned. Um, it's been very helpful to them to just have a one touch one stop shop to go look and see what work has been done on this segment of road you know you could click on the segment. Uh, a window pops up and you can see historically what has been done, and it really provides a good sense of where is our investments working where they may be not working quite so well. It's an opportunity to kind of reevaluate to say maybe we had been using this one type of, of preservation treatment for, for whatever reason, it's not working well on this segment. Um, you, we all know there's sometimes like the presence of, of a, a shade trees or a hedgerow can affect some of these surface treatments. And so it really helps to provide sort of a deeper dive into, into what's worked into what particular areas and what maybe hasn't worked so well, um, really within a touch of a button, um, instead of having to go back and try to dig through old contracts or paperwork um, to really kind of see what's, what is going on in that particular seg segment of road. And then this last one, this proactive management approach, um, I, I did want to uh, spend just a little bit of time there, um, kind of giving some examples of how we've used this to help our clients. So for example, once this is collected, we can um, compile this all into sort of these maintenance districts or neighborhoods. Uh, intuitively, it makes sense, you know, at least on the local streets, um, suburban local streets, urban local streets, that um, we know all of the streets would have gone in all at the same time when the subdivision went in. And so it sort of makes sense that since they've all been um, succumb to the same weather, the same relatively same traffic volumes, the same maintenance, they, they're probably going to age at the same rate. And so looking at them at this sort of subdivision level, again, for local streets, residential streets made a lot of sense. So we could sort of group them into these maintenance districts and then apply this sort of proactive strategy where you know once the initial street is put in, we want to manage it in a way to um, not ever get to the point of having to reconstruct it. That's that's our goal um, with local streets is that we we want to manage it in a way so that doesn't happen. And there's many options for treatments. Um, you all are very familiar with all of these. Um, depending on what sort of treatment is needed for based on the condition, there's all sorts of options varying in cost, appearance, um, the type of application. And we all know you, you all kind of um, make, make decisions based on these different factors, but lots of choices there. And so we, you know, these are trying to kind of capture some of our main themes on this management that if they are done proactively ahead of distress, um, it's important to do that so that it's restored to almost new conditions and that the overall cumulative effect does postpone rehabilitation and ideally will never get to the point of needing reconstruction again at the local local street level we know for arterials for sure uh, they will probably need reconstructed at some point just uh, especially in cases if, you know where the land use is changing and it needs to be upgraded to accommodate development so this is um, just a picture of these same neighborhoods that our projection after four years, you know, we would kind of develop these kind of um, maintenance bundles uh, for each each area for specific sorts of treatments. But this is um, kind of a picture of what it would look like after the five years of applying these recommended maintenance bu bundles that our engineers have developed. And just to give you a sense of the same area, this is what it would look like now five years from now after following a five-year plan of using an annual budget and applying specific treatments in specific areas, this is what our projection looks like after five years. Oops. And so with that, um, we are glad to take uh, any questions you might have. It looks like a lot of folks were interested in the specific tools. Uh, we're glad to talk some, uh, handle any questions through the chat or um, just through through voice over Kara. Lisa or Kara, do you have a preference on uh, how you'd like to handle the questions? 
it's a small group. So if people want to raise their hands and speak their questions, or if they want to write them into the chat, either is fine. Any takers? Okay, we do have a, a hand up. It's Lynn Packer. Lynn, go ahead. Hey, Kristen. Uh, Sheldon, I was curious about, uh, you said that, that uh, a new technology is, is coming available. Will you actually be able to use a cell phone attached to the rearview mirror to be able to help with that uh, process of, of uh, assessing the roads? Um, is that something you said in the next few days you're hoping for uh, to get something? Is that just to be able to test it, look at that type of technology? Or have you guys already had the opportunity to uh, uh, test that and work with it and you're actually getting ready to implement it? Yeah. Hi, Lynn. Thanks for the question. Yes, um, we actually, um, we've already driven our, our, our uh, pilot project and it is now um, here in the next couple of days, we're hoping to get the results back on that. Um, so it was actually doing, we're looking at three um, deliverables with that. One being the street evaluation Two, um, we're asking it to pick up like the edges of pavement, curb and gutter. Um, that will enable us to streamline the process of getting those polygons drawn into, um, into our GIS, as well as picking up signs. And with the signs, it's, it um, has the intelligence of doing MUTCD codes, um, and so forth. So, hey, thank you. That you actually touched on another thing with it drawing those polygons. Does that mean we sh you should be able to get uh, uh, quantities from it for distressed areas? Um, you can for distressed areas. The way that we're having it set up is just the same method as what we're currently doing, which is b uh, basically per block segment so it's just giving an overall rating per block okay but I, I believe that is something that can be done if you just want to see um, distressed areas okay excellent thanks lynn keith browning asked did you say your smartphone app collects data while driving the road when is it available will it assign a pacer rating to the road section so that was a little bit similar to lynn's question Yes, so it is um, using just your cell phone and um, correct the way that we are asking um, this technology is to base it upon the, the PASER rating. And again, hopefully um, here in the next couple of days um, that we will receive those results, um, feel free to, to reach out. Um, and ask us on um, what we are thinking on on if those are, you know, results that we're liking or you know, working the way that we hope that it will. So. Yeah, we definitely need. We'll need some time to do some QAQC. Um, we feel really good with our current system of having an engineer go out and read the streets, you know, with their, you know, using a tablet or a smartphone and going through that you know, that kind of the form Sheldon showed earlier. Um, so we feel good there. We want we want to have some time to compare that method with this new method of putting the smartphone in your car and driving the streets and this other app collecting the information um, and using this artificial intelligent method to essentially patch together, take photos and patch together the it's some of the gaps to automatically generate a PASER rating versus a rating being, ass being assigned by an engineer in the field. So we are going to need some time to do some QAQC. We're really hoping we could uh, have this done in time for our webinar today. It just didn't quite happen, um, but we're really excited about this option. Um, like Sheldon said, it's it's even cheaper, it's um, safer, um, it's almost um, instantaneous sort of once we, once we can get to the point where we feel good with those results. Is this something that PEC plans to commercialize as a product or will it just be available 
through P PEC's consulting services? It we're actually using an, another vendor. Okay. Yeah. Um, so can you guys, this is from Frank Abert. Can you provide an idea of cost for this system? Great question. Very good question. We know that's always on folks' minds. Um, it really varies. Um, there's, there's many, many options of discretion here. So one of the first variables is um, the state of your, um, the GIS network for your road system. Does it exist? What sorts of attribute data does it have on it? Do, do you have a width? Are we going to have to estimate a width? That's a variable for sure. Uh, the other big variable is sort of the division of labor. Is this something you know you would like us to kind of set up the system and then you go out and carry out the results? Would you like us to carry out the risk? I mean, carry out the uh, actual assessment? Would you like our engineers to carry out the assessment? Do you want to split it half and half? Um, really a, a huge range there. Um, so the, those are probably the two biggest variables. Sheldon, do you have others you want to add? Um, no, I, th I think you you hit on all of them. Um, again, um, with these apps, we're, we're setting them up so they're very intuitive. So, um, you know, anyone with a with a smart device can can utilize them. That's right. And that's why we do find these so powerful is that they do provide our clients with options on whether they want to um, carry it out themselves, pretty much do everything themselves. If we set up the system and then they do it themselves and take it from there, sometimes our clients would like us to actually carry out the assessment. So um, feel, feel free to reach out after the webinar. We're glad to look at your individual situation. I will say, you know, I, I feel like these have been very, very um, affordable. Um, in comparison to other methods, um, when you're looking at both the time and dollar amounts of um, either, you know, your own staff doing it, coming up with the whole system, managing it yourself, or some of the higher end things where, you know, you, it's, you're looking at tens of thousands of dollars to have a vehicle come out and, and rate it. And it's can be kind of, sometimes it seems sort of overly complicated. So I can see this being a little overwhelming to a community, maybe a smaller community that doesn't have any kind of GIS data, doesn't have a current assessment system. How do you recommend a smaller city get started with a program like this? Great, great question. Um, first, first things first is, is the inventory needs to be developed, the, the, your street network. Um, so that's something that is pretty easy, pretty straightforward to do. There's lots of tools available to develop a GIS shapefile, essentially a layer of your street network. That would be the very first thing. So that's something, again, we're glad to take care of for you, or we're glad to kind of set up the system and, and you can do that yourself. That would, that would be the first thing. Sheldon? Yes, I, I would also like to add um, over over the years, um, the price of, and I, I'm going to throw out being Esri. I mean, that's, we're an Esri shop. So, but over the, the years, that has become very affordable as well as expandable. So you can just start with one user license and then if needed, then you can add additional. So, and, and I'm saying, with one user, you can get started as low as $500 a year for the software. And that will give you the ability and access to everything that we showed in our demonstration. Excellent. Um, and uh, participants, please feel free to raise your hand or type your questions in the chat. I'm not seeing any additional questions. I'll give folks a little bit of time to type them in. <clears throat> Where do you see this going next? Do you, what is the next generation of this technology or of uh, automating street assessments? Um, I'll jump in on that first, yes. Kristen. Um, yeah, so our 
our, I guess our first and biggest hope is that the, the AI um, will really streamline the process. Um, to me, that's probably the, the, the biggest, um, the biggest one that I'm looking forward to. Um, and as far as there's a lot more abilities, um, as far as the presenting the data, um, analyzing the data, you know, which I know we mentioned about including, you know, the maintenance, what's been done, tracking that. Um, so I think we'll continue to build more tools um, regarding maybe even throwing in different costs per each treatment type or just so that you can get a better idea of what, um, what it's going to conceptually um, cost to, to maintain your streets. I think that might be a really good one just because we often hear from decision makers how they, they want things automated and available for feedback immediately. Of course, there's always a margin for error of that or you're using typical information instead of localized information, but at least it gives people an order of magnitude. Right. And Keith Browning asks, you use the example of the smartphone app on city streets. It is, is it also available for long segments over several miles on county roads? Yes, yes, it can be. And we, we can break up those segments in, in, any, in any way, whether it be at every, every mile or every 10 miles. That, um, that can definitely be fit to each individual's needs. Excellent. And, and in terms of um, just kind of adding on to Sheldon's notion of what's next, you know, we really hope that this can become a tool to supplement um, local knowledge and pu public works departments, city, county, city and county engineer departments. We know they have a really good pulse of kind of what's going on, the condition of their network. And we hope this can be a tool to sort of supplement that knowledge and communicate it with decisions upwards and with, with the public. Um, that this can be helpful in kind of answering questions of why was answering why why was this street segment chosen why wasn't this one to to help kind of move that forward and to do it in an affordable way, you know Sheldon mentioned you you could do this with a five hundred dollar annual license for you know a one license you could get all this done there'd be an, some cost for this kind of initial setup but. Um, you know, very affordable when compared to some of these other, you know, methods with a, using a truck. And then this other, um, the smart bone technology, it's also very, very affordable. I mean, we're talking, you know, less than, you know, between zero and, you know, $5,000 potentially, depending on your lane, the number of lane miles there are. So we're hoping this can turn into something that's not some very expensive thing you do once every five years, that it can be something affordable built into your annual budget that will be helpful in prioritizing and making decisions about maintenance really on any type of network, a city, a suburban network, a county road network, um, if you're looking at arterials, residential streets, gravel streets, pavement, or asphalt or concrete pavement just sort of a system-wide look at, at your entire system. Excellent. I think that was the perfect way to wrap it up. So thank you so much, Kristen and Sheldon. This is great information for all of us. And uh, we enjoy seeing this type of innovation in the field that can really be practical for our local communities. We appreciate your time and a very big thank you to all the attendees. We hope you enjoyed this webinar. And if you have any questions later, feel please feel free to contact me or the speakers. And next month we will have our final speaker in the M3 webinar series who will be sharing most vital management strategies to successfully implementing innovations in the AEC industry. So we really see this as a wrap up of all of our sessions by talking about um, the strategies for implementing innovation and where there are kind of challenges to implementing innovation. So we hope to see you all at the next webinar and we'll be sending information about that shortly. Also, we did record this webinar for your future reference and we'll be posting it on our YouTube channel soon where you can find our past webinars as well. And we'll see you next time. Until then, have a great day.